This clip discusses what happens if our regressors in a regression equation are random. So there's some reading, green, chapters 4, 3 to 4, 5. So consider our model written in matrix form y equals x beta plus u. Now which parts are random? It's the u that is certainly a random vector. That's a vector of a random variable. So this yellow bit, this is random. Now with this in mind, consider the OLS estimator beta hat equals x prime x inverse x prime y and we know that by substituting our regression equation and doing a few steps of algebra we can get this equation beta hat is beta plus x prime x inverse x prime u and here's the random term since there's a random term on the right hand side beta hat is also a random variable that's the first important finding now if we make the assumption that the expected value of u is equal to zero, we get the result that the expected value of beta hat is equal to beta, and therefore unbiased if x is assumed to be non-random. Okay, so that's if x is assumed to be non-random. What, however, happens if x is also random? Then the right-hand side has more random terms, so we have more yellow terms here on the right-hand side, all the x's. And as it turns out, clearly beta hat is still a random variable. And now we need a slightly different additional assumption. We need to make the zero conditional mean assumption. That zero conditional mean assumption says that the expected value of u conditional on x is equal to zero. So that conditional refers to that x, that conditional statement. And this assumption allows us to conclude that the conditional expectation of beta hat is equal to beta. Okay, so conditionally we still have an unbiased parameter estimator. To understand what the implication of this slight difference in results is, we really need to know how to interpret this last statement. What we have said is that for a particular value particular set of values of x, the expected value of beta hat is equal to beta. Okay, so it's therefore unbiased. But that's valid for a particular value of x. Now the question is, can we generalize this to any set of values of x? Well, because in the end that's what we are interested in, where we know our x's are one realization but we, our results, we usually want to generalize them to not be dependent on a particular x. So how do we achieve this? So that's what we want is that one, the unconditional expectation of beta hat. Okay, so that's the unconditional expectation. Now if the x's are random, what we have is the conditional expectation. So let me state that here the conditional expectation that for the time being that equal sign is um, uh, not quite true yet okay we have to do something else so here we have the conditional expectation now that expectation it's important to understand what that applies to that's the expectation over the random variable beta hat we know our estimator is a random variable so something like on average we expect beta hat to be. Now what we now want to do by making it unconditional, therefore independent of x, we need to take an expectation over the random variable x. Remember we are in the case where x is a random variable, so that e subscript x means we are now taking an expectation with respect to x. It's not the same, these two e's are different operators, they operate on different random variables. Now this bit we have established previously that this is beta, so for any x the conditional expectation is beta and therefore if we now average or take the expectation of all x's it's quite obvious that the result has to be beta as well because it is beta for any x. What we have seen here is an application of what is called the law of iterated expectation. In this particular case it's sort of quite intuitive because we know the conditional expectation is equal to beta regardless of what x we have, but conditional on any x, therefore taking expectations over x 
will just result in beta again. So we have basically established that even if the axes are random, the unconditional expectation of beta hat is equal to beta. And that is if the Gauss Markov assumptions, or at least some of them, the first three hold. We don't need all Gauss Markov assumptions for this. The next question is what about the variance of beta hat? Do we have the same effect of randomness of x? Just to remind yourself, if the x are non random, the variance of beta hat is sigma squared times x prime x inverse. So if the axes are random, it turns out with the same tools as above, we can establish that the conditional variance of beta hat is sigma squared times x prime x inverse. So what we want is the unconditional variance of beta hat for the same reason as we want it for the expectation. And how does that relate to the conditional variance which we know to be sigma squared times x prime x inverse? How do we get from the conditional to the unconditional? Again, we take expectations over the random variable x. So here we have the conditional variance, conditional on x. Then we take expectations over x and what we get is the unconditional variance. So previously we found out that the, the when we looked at the expected value we just ended up with the same result. The uh, conditional expectation, the unconditional were the same. So let's start writing that down the same. The conditional was sigma squared times x from x inverse. Now however it turns out to make this equation true we need to include the expectation over x over x prime x inverse. So this is now the unconditional variance of beta hat sigma squared times the expectation over x of x prime x inverse. So let's write that down. The question then arises how do we deal with this in practice? Practice the sigma squared and this expectation are unknown. So how do we proxy these terms? This, as we already know it, with the sample variance of the residuals. What about this? Well, we'll just use x prime x inverse. x prime x inverse is then an estimate of the unknown expectation of x prime x inverse. And that estimate is based on really the one and the only one observation we have of our matrix x. Let's test your understanding with two multiple choice questions. Here we have a linear model. Don't be confused by the different letters. It's just like y equals x beta plus u just with different names. And let's assume that the matrix M, our explanatory variables, is deterministic. They're non-random. In that case, we know that the OLS estimator for gamma has the following properties. We'll add the assumption that the Gauss Markov assumption sold. A. Gamma hat equals m prime m inverse m prime z. Expected value of gamma hat is equal to gamma. The variance of gamma hat is equal to sigma squared times m prime m, m, prime m inverse. O B. Gamma hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. Expected value of gamma hat is equal to beta. Variance of gamma hat is equal to sigma squared times x prime x inverse. Or c. Gamma hat is equal to m prime m inverse m prime z. And we can use t tests to perform inference of the following form gamma i hat minus gamma i divided by standard error of gamma i hat where the standard error of gamma i hat is the square root of the i-th diagonal element of the matrix sigma squared times m prime m inverse or d Gamma hat is equal to m prime m, m prime z, and we cannot calculate a t test as we don't know the value for the expectation with respect to m of m prime m inverse.
So pause the clip and think, there could be several correct solutions. Let's start with question A of answer A. This is absolutely correct. The OLS formula applied to our model if Gauss Markov assumption sold and M are deterministic, all of that is correct. B. Now here you just used X and Y's, although they don't appear in the model, so you just copied from the lecture notes. Uh, you show no understanding. Here the gamma hat formula is correct. In fact, the T formula is correct and it's correct that SE gamma i hat is the ith element of that matrix. That matrix here has on the diagonal all the variance element elements of the uh, elements in gamma. So if for instance we want the third element then we take the square root of that third diagonal element and we get the standard error of gamma 3 hat for instance. So can do that with any i. Now solution D, that's an inverse missing, so certainly that's not correct. Now that matrix, if you followed the previous lecture, is only required if m was actually random. So let's look at the second question. We have another linear model, again other variable names but the same linear model. If the matrix of explanatory variables q is now a matrix valued random variable, all that means is a random variable, but we have a matrix of values of that. Then the following statements are true, or is true, or are true, could be several. Also assume again that the Gauss Markov assumptions hold. A. We get exactly the same result for the expected value of the OLS coefficient estimate delta hat and its variance as in the case in which q is deterministic which means non-random b we cannot apply any t-tests as in this variance formula which is correct we do not know the expected value with respect to q of q prime q inverse. Note again that sigma squared is just the variance of our error term epsilon. C. In practice we will calculate the same t-test as in the case in which the matrix of explanatory variables q was deterministic. So pause the clip and think. Let's look at the solution starting with solution A. Exactly the same for the expected value and variance. That isn't quite right. It turned out that we did indeed get the same expected value for delta hat irrespective of whether Q was deterministic or random, but not for the variance. For that, let's just remind ourselves, we had the two cases, q was either deterministic or a random variable, and we got results for the variance of, in this case, delta hat, our OLS estimator. In the case where q was deterministic, that was just sigma squared times q prime q inverse, our common formula. In the case where it was a random variable, it was sigma squared times the expected value with respect of q of q prime q inverse. Sorry for the squashed nature of this. So they're not exactly the same. Solution B. Now in this formula, that this is the variance formula, that was indeed correct. But since when do econometricians bother about not knowing particular values? We can still apply it because we can use estimates for the missing values. Now it turns out we know neither the sigma squared nor, nor that expectation term. Now what we usually do for the sigma squared is we use our sample estimate of the residual variance and for the expected value with respect of q of that inverse term we shall just use q prime q inverse, our one observation we have of that 
random variable. So B isn't correct either. C, however, is correct. In practice, we use exactly the same formula for the variance because we saw they are really different, but if Q is deterministic, we need to calculate S squared. We need to estimate sigma squared, S squared times Q prime Q inverse. And that is exactly what we suggested in the discussion to B we should do in case Q is a random variable.